Hey everybody, it's Eugene Leisher here and welcome to Click 3D. This is the program where we talk about photogrammetry and how you can use your digital camera to create compelling 3D models. Photogrammetry can also be used to do other stuff. And so today I want to talk about some of that other stuff and how it can be used in a very specific application. And the application I'm going to talk about is cartridge case ejection patterns. This is something that we did an experiment on recently with a student from the University of Toronto. And normally what would happen is you'd have a shooter and they're firing a gun. The cartridge cases get ejected out of the gun and they land on the floor or whatever and then you document their final position. Now if you're only doing five or ten or a few, no big deal. Grab a tape measure, you know, pick a reference spot and then kind of map it out that way and it's no big deal. But we were doing hundreds of uh, fired cartridge cases. So in that, um, in that regard or with that many uh, cartridge cases, it would take a long time to document in the field. So the method that we're using is a photogrammetric method and the software that we're using is Photomodeler. And what this allows us to do is take a video camera like a GoPro or some other camera and just record the shots. And what we're going to do is create a grid on the ground, take a video camera that captures the grid, the shooter and the cartridge cases as they fall out. And then from there, um, we can process and analyze the video later on. So let me give you a quick uh, look here at what we're talking about. Um, this is the basic setup here. You'll see that we have a grid and uh, there's another little spot here. There's a, a, a plumb bob with a string and that's where the ejection port of the gun is laid at. And if I just press play here, I'll let this go and I'll speak over this. But basically what you're going to see is the cartridge cases flying out and uh, they're just going to land on the ground basically. So there you go. So there's one that's bouncing around. There's another one. Okay. So, you know, for just a few, no big deal. They're easy to record um, with a tape measure. But if you did three, four, five, six hundred or a thousand, this would take a heck of a lot of time. So we didn't want to waste time at the range. What we wanted to do was just document it as quickly as possible. How is this going to work? You know, how are we going to make this work? So the basic process is going to be like this. Record the video of the gun being fired and the cartridge case, uh, uh, the cartridge cases falling onto the ground. And one of the cool things we can do with this is we can actually locate where the cartridge case first hits the ground. That would be hard to do if you didn't have a video camera or some other instrument that records where it touches off at first. And then it bounces around, it rolls around, and then finally it ends up at its final position. And so we have the initial point of contact on the ground relative to where the shooter fired the uh, the shot from and then we have the final position relative to where the shooter fired from so we know the distance that the cartridge case traveled when it first hit the ground and then when it finally um, ended up in, in the uh, last position or the final position. So let's have a look here on how we would analyze something like this and I'll walk you through the steps. And this process is the same process in Photomodeler that you could use for locating anything that's on a surface or you could actually use it for suspect height analysis. So there's a little little trick or a little tweak you got to do in order to make it um, work for suspect height because in that case you're uh, measuring something that's off the surface of the ground. But in this case that sort of flat grid or that plane that's on the bottom, um, anything that's touching it, that's what we're going to be looking for or looking at. So let's get started. I'm going to fire up Photomodeler and I'm going to walk through this step by step. I'd like to go through the process here of how you would test and set something like this up. And it is a little bit involved, but remember, what this is allowing you to do is record a very large number of cartridge cases and not just, you know, five or ten. If you're going to do a very small amount, you may as well just do it by hand. The process looks something like this. The first thing is, you know, establish a grid and we need to then record the coordinates for that grid. Then we need to set up the video cameras, fire the test shots, then take that video and extract the selected frames that we want, and then do the analysis in Photomodeler. And I'll go through these in a little bit more detail. 
When establishing a grid, that's something that people currently do anyway. If you're doing this manually, it's just extremely helpful to kind of see which quad quadrant it falls in. And it's kind of a guide if you're going to be, you know, choosing one of these points as a reference point, like your zero, zero point, and then kind of measuring a, in a baseline offset method, which is basically you run along, let's say a baseline like this baseline. And then at 90 degrees, you measure out to wherever the cartridge case might be. Now, in our case, this is useful because this is going to help us to correct lens distortion after, and it's going to give us a bunch of coordinates. Now, this particular grid that we've established already had some painted lines in the ground. So we're using these red lines here and some of these markings, these smaller numbers as references. But if you just had a plain, you know, floor with nothing on it, then what you would want to do is establish a grid and have some, uh, you know, some lines that are running uh, both horizontally and vertically here in my picture, but basically in an X and Y axis on the ground. That's the grid. And you can do that with tape or whatever string if you're outdoors whatever it might be you can use whatever it is but again you just want to make sure that you have a grid that's very visible okay something that's clearly visible in the video now afterwards you have to record the grid coordinates and if actually let me back up a second here all these little intersection points here where the blue tape hits the red the corner uh, maybe the the edges of this particular stripe here all these things are useful and the reason is you're going to use those coordinates after in photo modeler. now make sure you don't mix them up you always start with a reference like a zero 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 and then you'd come out this is an eight meter grid so coming from this point up top here and you've come down to this point so that coordinate would be zero eight and then this corner here would be eight comma eight so uh and this is a three meter grid here so uh this is where we started the shooting position and you know this is another corner so we have plenty of points that we can use here but remember uh you're gonna want to get about 20 or 30 points that are very well spread out so that they're spread out in the video and on the grid on the ground now in our case we used a laser scanner so that simplified the process significantly you know i was able to just go up scan the grid and that was it you know i had just about every coordinate i needed including stuff on the wall stuff on the ceiling whatever it was but really what i'm interested in is capturing as much of the grid and as much of the the stuff that's in the video as possible and if i back up here again you'll notice that the grid makes up a very large area in the uh, in the overall video and what we don't want to have is a very small grid in the in the in the middle and then you know that's kind of what you're working with what you really want to work with is a grid that's sort of taking up a lot of space and i want to get this video camera up high so that um, you can see i got quite a bit of skew here we're using gopros so you can see quite a bit of lens lens distortion but putting that camera up as high as you can will help you so if you're outdoors you probably have an advantage where you can get a tripod up high we're sort of limited here because the the ceiling has got some uh, uh, some things that uh, like a little drop ceiling some protection here so that you don't shoot through the ceiling but it's not a high ceiling it's a fairly low ceiling with the laser scanner data this is the what the laser scan looks like over here you can see we had some lighting uh, a little bit overexposed here but we can make out the corners here here all these little numbers and things like that those are all uh, able to be uh, extracted okay as a, as a set of coordinates and when you first import this into software there's um, just showing you that this is some of the underlying points so there's millions and millions of points here and each one of these we can click on and so this is one way to do it if you don't have a laser scanner you don't need one you can just take hand measurements so long as they're taken as accurately as possible it will absolutely work now the video setup so this is important so in our test here we had two cameras we only only ended up using one but here you can see one tripod up on a table we're trying to get it as high as possible and uh, this is a gopro it's pointing down and that was the other view that you saw but you can see even in this particular camera angle we're getting a lot of the grid so there's one corner over here another corner here one here and there's one right across over here and I'm kind of standing in front of it almost so that's really important elevated location if you can do it that's great use a large resolution 
uh, on your camera. So don't try to go with something small. If you have a 4K video format, go ahead and use that. It'll maximize uh, some of the details. And uh, for cartridge cases, it's usually okay. You can get close enough when you zoom in and you'll get a lot of uh, pixels to choose from. If you choose like a, if you have a camera that's low resolution, like 1080p or something like that, it may not be the best or you'll have to work in a smaller area. Also, when you're starting the test, it's a good idea to just start the camera and then just don't touch it anymore. Don't move it or whatever, because every time you move it, you have to set it up again in photo model. So one camera setting, just leave it like a security camera that was fixed in a corner or whatever. If you need to use a remote to start and stop. Okay. So a lot of these GoPros, they have a little remote that you can use and it's no problem. Some of them you can even just use with your phone, uh, your app or whatever. And you know, this way it's hands off. You're not shaking it. You're not moving it and just stay well away from the tripod. Don't kick it or anything and move it. So setting up the camera, uh, is an important point. And once you set it, forget it and just record the whole thing. Once you're set up with the cameras, you can go ahead and run and record. And I'll just play this video here. Uh, there is some audio. Yeah, you can see here, we're just, I'm just going to leave the camera. Now we fired a lot of shots. I think this was our first run, our first go at it. And we just let it go. And that's pretty much it. You know, nothing really to see here other than people firing a gun and cartridge cases landing on the ground. Now, when you do have the video, you can extract every single frame if you want and work with that, but it becomes really, really cumbersome to work with thousands of frames in software. So something that I do is I will go through the video and I'll extract just the frames that I need. Now it takes a little bit of time to do that and you'll need some, maybe some different software. Um, actually photo model has a way to extract particular frames or ranges of frames if you want. Um, but I did this separately. So I actually did extract all the frames. I have a program called input ACE. And then what I do is I cycle through all the images and as I'm watching it, I'll say, yep, yeah, okay, that's that's where the cartridge case first hit the ground right over here. And what I'll do is just save them in a file. So I'll say, okay, that's the first one. That's the second one. And I may just record which frame it is. Uh, actually the frame number is even on there. So I'll know which one it is. But uh, what I'll do is I'll also take it into something like Photoshop and I'll actually write. So this, this, uh, text here with the circle is embedded right into the image and uh, from Photoshop. And that this way, I won't forget where it is. I won't be looking around the ground trying to figure out when there's, you know, hundreds of these cartridge cases on the ground. So I have it this way. And you can see here at the bottom, there's uh, some other uh, frames that I've done just showing you. And as soon as I bring it up, I know exactly where I need to look. So it's uh, a little bit of work on the front end, but saves you a lot of time on the back end. Okay, the next step here is to analyze in photo model. So let me switch my screen. I'll get over and then I'll go step by step through photo model and show you how this works. Okay, so here we are at the photo modeler interface. And before we get started, um, I will say that there is quite a bit to photo modeler. So it's a very, very comprehensive photogrammetry package and it's not uh, the easiest software to learn because it can do quite a lot. You know, if you're just doing simple 3D models and things like that, it's fine or whatever, but there's a lot more to photo modeler than meets the eye. So I'm going to break these down into little chunks and then we're going to move on from there. So the first step is going to be to create a new project and to bring in a file that we can work with one of the frames. Okay. So let's start with that and we'll go from there. Now I'm just going to go file. I'm going to go new, and this is going to be a manually marked project. And you can see in photo model, they have a bunch of different types of things that you can do. So let's just go to a manually marked project and photo model will set that up first. And it says, Hey, like you don't have any photos, so you need to add something here. So what we're going to do is we are going to add the frames. Okay. But actually I'm just going to add one frame for now. However, you can also import video. So if I go into my file and I open one of these video files, you'll see here, it says, Hey, do you want to automatically extract frames here? And we can do that. Um, but because we're not dealing with things over a set time, then what we can do is manually pick the frames down here at the bottom, like right here. And I'm just going to go, okay. Now this brings up a menu where um, you can watch what's happening. You can press play and it'll play the file for you. 
Now, the problem here is that the uh, view is kind of small and the cartridge cases are very small as well. So you almost have to look at these, you know, in full resolution in order to see them hitting the ground and where they are in their final rest position. But this is a useful tool when using photo, uh, photo modeler. You can extract, you know, individual frames as you're sort of just, you know, moving along here like this, uh, you know, a certain spot, save that particular frame. Or you can tell it a certain number of frames that you want, like every so many frames you'll get a, a, it'll extract one or, you know, so many per second kind of thing. And now we're not going to do that here because I've already done this previously, but I just want you to know that this is available. So I'm going to go back into my my frames here. Now I've done a couple of things. I have one empty frame. I shouldn't say empty, but one frame where the cartridge case hits the ground, but I don't have the writing on it. Okay. In this one. And then in the second one, it's the same frame. I've just added the text. Okay. Just to kind of help me with that. Now, if I want, I can limit that. I can just pick the ones with the text on it. If I can get it here, here, here. Uh, but you know what? I'll just, I'll just select them all. That's what I had. That's not a problem. Okay. Now that's all of them. Actually, I made a mistake already. Okay. Let me back up here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just add one of the frames. Any one of these is fine. I'm going to click on this one and go, yep, I want that one. Afterwards in the software, we can tell it that there's an image sequence. So we're going to replace this image with the complete sequence of frames. And then we can scroll through them like we can advance and then look at to see frame one, two, three, four, whatever, whatever order you want. But for now, we only need to work on one. So now it's going to ask me, well, look, you've got this one frame and we're not sure where this came from. It's extract. It's an extracted frame from video. So it doesn't have like EXIF information like a regular image does, or at least not as complete. So what we're going to be doing is what's called a control points project. So we're going to be matching points to this uh, photo and then solve for the camera's position from there. So I'm just going to go next. Okay, great. So let me just double click on this. This will bring up the image and this is what we're going to be working with. Okay, great. So that's the first part. We've uh, started a new project and we've got a single frame in here. Great. We're set up. The next part is where we're going to have to mark and reference points from the scan data that I took to the image. And I need to pick uh, very specific points as best as I can. So uh, first things first, I need to import the scan data and then tell it that we're going to be using that for um, uh, for picking points across a single image like this. So let's go ahead and do that. We are going to tell it that uh, here it says imports and coordinates. Uh, that's what we want. Okay, and there's this menu that pops up. So in this menu up here, okay, it says import data. I'm going to click on that. And then it says, well, what kind of stuff are you importing and what are you going to do with it? Well, we're going to be controlling the solution. That's the one that we're going to be using for this. And then it gives you a bunch of options here. And we're going to be using a point cloud. Now you can bring in like a DXF file or point file, whatever, but that's really what we're looking for. And then I'm going to go find it. And that's going to be over here. This is this one, empty range scan. And then it says, what are the units? Uh, these are in meters. I know they're in meters because I did it. And then I'm going to go next. Okay. So it gives me a preview. It says X, Y, Z, and then RGB data. That looks good. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. So what photo modeler is going to do is take that data and it's going to load it all up. Now I will say this, the point data file that I have here is actually quite large. Okay. So for a photo modeler, it's like, it's almost 15 million points and that's quite a lot for photo modeler to handle. So sometimes it's better just to optimize the point cloud before you bring it in, keep the areas that are more dense and, you know, you can kind of get rid of all the other stuff and that'll really help the, uh, the workflow. So as I'm working here, it's going to be a little slow, but it's okay. It's, uh, it, it, it'll be okay for this particular project here. So just give this, uh, a uh, second here and it will load right up. Okay, so it just imported the scan data that's just over here. And I'm going to just move this down to get a little bit more real estate because we're going to be manipulating uh, this scan data. That's going to be important. So to reiterate, we started a new project. We have the frames imported. Actually, we just took one individual frame for the moment, but you'll see, I'm going to show you how to bring the other ones in after. And then what we did was we imported the scan data, which is right over here.
Now, if I zoom in, you'll see here on the image, it says 60, 50, 40. So those are good references for us to kind of look at. And you'll see here it says 60, 50, and then 40 is just above that. So I'm going to start in this particular corner here. Let me zoom in a bit better and we'll get uh, some better uh, clarity on the point cloud data. And uh, right about there would be okay. I'm going to do this kind of quick. So, you know, normally I would take a bit more care in marking these, but for the purposes of this uh, tutorial, it should be fine. So you'll see the 60 here and right beside it, I've got this striped uh, line on the ground, which is right over here. Okay, so I can pick off these points. Now what I need to do is tell Photo Modeler that I want to start matching these and referencing these, uh, referencing these control points. So I'm going to say activate the control point marking here. And it's just a simple matter now of just clicking. So I'm going to click on this corner here. And then I have to find the corresponding corner that's here. Okay, and it puts a little sphere there. And I'm going to click on this corner here. And again, I would normally zoom in a lot more and maybe uh, do this with a bit more detail. Um, but I'm just going to uh, do this kind of quickly here. So what I'm doing is I'm marking and referencing points. I'm telling uh, Photo Modeler that there is a 3D coordinate in this scan file that I'm going to assign to a 2D pixel value here on the image like that. And um, I'm going to continue doing this. I'm going to zoom in a bit here, move this over. Let me zoom in a bit more. So I'm going to choose the inside corner over here. I'm just going to click. And of course, you got to do these in order. So I'm going to go down here and you'll see it gets pretty pixelated. So you got to do your best and try to estimate where that uh, point is. Uh, I've got this arrow. So one thing about the control point marking, it's great if you have stuff on the edges and well spread out on the image. I'm going to try and pick points that are sort of at the extreme locations like here and here, um, you know, somewhere out in this area and then even up on the top here. So if you only took coordinates on the ground plane, that's OK. Just try to maximize the ground plane in the image or the grid in the image. Now, I have some points that are up here, so I may pick a couple of few points that are up on the wall because I have the scan data and that will help the the, the reconstruction or it'll help to figure out where the camera is and some of the parameters here. So no big deal. Uh, if you don't have it, just, you know, try to do as best as you can. Um, and again, I'm doing this quickly, so I normally try to figure out where this is really, really precisely. But I'm just going to do the tip of the arrow and I'll do that here. And I realize this is going to get redundant for you guys. So what I'll do is um, I'm just going to go ahead and keep doing this. And then once I have it all marked and I'll show you, I'm going to do 3D points that are out here, here and here. Uh, you'll come back and you'll see which points that I've marked. But this is the basic process. OK, just marking the control point here and then going back and picking a point off in the screen. So I'll come right back as soon as I'm done. OK, so we are back and you can see that I have a whole bunch of these control points that are marked and you'll see all these little spheres that are on the point cloud data uh, from the um, control points here and they're all marked in reference. So they're all pretty much ready to go again. Recap. We started a new project, brought in one image. We imported the point cloud data and have marked and referenced control points to here. So now what's left to do is to solve for the project. So now we can tell photo model, okay, go ahead and figure out where the camera position was. And so to do that, I'm actually, there's a shortcut here. I'm just going to use the shortcut because I'm used to it, but it's this process button here and it's F5. And it gives you some options. It says orientation. Yeah, definitely. We want to know where the, uh, the camera is going to be uh, located and there's this also this optimize and I'm going to click on this optimize and include the camera optimization. So it's going to do its best to estimate where the camera was and um, also look at maybe it can figure out some of the lens distortion and stuff like that. So I'm going to do that and I'm just going to go ahead and process and it's going to do its thing. And uh, in a second here, you'll see that it says, hey, we uh, figured out some stuff and there's a residual error and that sort of thing. I'm not going to get too deep into it. Um, I would probably want to improve this a bit if I can. I did it kind of fast. So it, basically what it's telling me is that my largest error here was seven pixels. OK, so it thinks that 
there's a there's a point in there that should be a little bit closer uh, and that's the the maximum so one nice thing about photo modeler is that it reports the maximum but i could go in and look at the rms value which will probably be much much less than that okay so um like here it says 1.78 that's probably closer to what that what the, that's what the rms um, actually is so i'm going to click ok uh, I'm just going to turn off the inverse camera now so it's not going to make any more adjustments going forward. I'm going to lock it in here. The next step, now that it's solved, and like I said, down here it shows me my error, but what I'm going to do is leave it. Uh, I could normally go in and adjust and tweak some things or add some more control points to improve this. We're going to leave it and just kind of go on from here. What I want to do is create a surface. So I know where all these points are in space, but I want to create a surface. And on that surface, what I'm going to do is create a plane. And then when I see these cartridge cases coming off of the gun and landing on the ground, I can mark a point on this plane and it will know where it is on the plane and give me some coordinates for that. So I'm going to close the imports and coordinate systems window. I don't need that anymore and let's uh let's see what we can do here so in order to draw i'll just draw some lines right now and so here you see it says points lines so i'm just going to choose lines and what i'm going to do is connect these points here like this like this like that and so just give me a second here i'm going to go ahead and this is the top corner of the grid here 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 and i'm just going to go across and and do this oh there's two here so i gotta be careful that one there and then this one, this one, this one. Now these are just lines, so that it's not actually a surface. And I'm gonna right click and then go end draw. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a surface from all these lines. Now I could have actually just created the surface to start with, but no big deal. Sometimes I just like to see the lines there for the edges and, uh, and that's okay. Surface, new surface, if I click on that, um, I'm going to just click on this line. Actually, sorry, let me go back here. That's a path. So I actually want the path. There we go. So I'm going to click on the line already. And that's one of the advantages of having the lines. It'll just start connecting the lines as a path. There we go. And you'll see slowly, 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 we're going to have something here like this, like this, like this. And this is the last segment. And then I can do a right click and go finish surface. Okay, great. I have a surface now that's been created, but I don't see it here. So I'm only looking at the image, but I want to look at the 3D view. So to bring up the 3D view, I'm going to hit the F7 button. Okay, that's a shortcut. And you'll see that it has actually the point cloud and it has uh, the uh, the plane overlaid on it. So I want to get rid of the point cloud. That's just going to slow me down in my viewport. So I'm just going to go out here and I'm going to say point clouds, please disappear. So I can just work with the uh, the mesh here, which is this one right here. Okay, so I've got, and you'll see that it, even though here it's all curved like this, so photo modeler can figure out, if I go reset this, it knows that it's square, and that's because I've hit all those points, and so it looks pretty good. So the next thing that I wanna do is, I wanna get some color on this. Now I don't really need it, but um, I wanna project the color that's on here onto this particular mesh. In order to do that, so I need to look at the surface materials. I'm going to click on this mesh. And then what I'm going to do up here is it says that uh, the material, this is the surface default material, which is true. So I can try to project this right now and it might give me some issues. And so there's a little quick screen that comes down here. And if I scroll down, it says surfaces, meshes, and cylinders. It gives it a single color. Well, what we want to do actually is go to quality textures. We want to pull the textures from the images and make sure that they're projected properly. So it's actually going to calculate this. So it goes back and just does it automatically. Now, sometimes, let me scroll around here, it may not work right away. And the reason is the camera angles and such like that are like way off so it tries to take the best images and this one maybe may not be the best because it's a little bit oblique there may be other things going on so two things i can do to fix that um or two settings but all they're all in the same place if i go to here and the materials are and i look at the surface default material that was here surface default i'm going to go to advanced materials and here i'm going to turn this up to like um i don't know 
160, oh, 160 degrees or something like that. Give it a really wide angle. And I'm not going to perform occlusion checking. Uh, may not be important in this regard, but I'm just going to go click OK, apply. You'll see that it resets here, but I need to create it again. Okay, so let me just go here. Now, I didn't have to do this. It just helps with visualization. So um, it's not an important or absolutely necessary step, but I'm going to click on update and then let it crunch through this. Now, if I click off of this, you'll see that I've got a material here. Okay, so I've got something going on. It looks like it's flipped. So I can actually make this two-sided or I can actually flip the geometry. So one solution to this is just, um, I'm going to go to the properties uh, of this particular object. And it, it just by right clicking on it and then uh, where it says double sided, I'll just go, yeah, just make it double sided. And then if I click off of it, you'll see I've got the 50, the 40 marker. Let me reset this. And when I zoom in, you'll see 40, 50. So there's the 40 here. There's the 50 there. So basically it just kind of orients it the way I want. Okay, what I'm going to do is now, now that I've got this part set up, is I need to start looking through the images and marking the points where the cartridge cases landed on the floor. So this is this is now, you can see it's a bit of a process, but the, the good part is you do this once and now I can bring in all the frames and I can just start marking them on the plane and I can get coordinates for those particular cartridge cases and even do other things like marking, creating the distance or finding the distance between them and such. Let's do that. Let's do that right now. And what I'm going to do is on this particular image, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to um, properties of selected photos and where it says here where, where the image is and stuff like that. If I click on it, it gives me some options down here. And one of them is create an image sequence. And that's what I want to do. So I'm going to click on that and it says, OK, what are you going to add? And I'm going to click this uh, by file, let's say. So I've got my folder here with all my images and I'm just going to select them all and open. Okay, It says one of them was already in there already. So yeah, I knew that. That's fine. And then I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. So what will this allow me to do is scroll through. If I just go OK here, uh, you'll see now up here it says photo one of 20. So I can now scroll through this. So if I use the page up and page down, you'll see that my images are changing and I've got that sequence there and because they're labeled it just makes it super easy for me now to uh, figure out where all this stuff is so let me go back to the beginning and I'll go to the first uh, frame uh, right here and the first one where it's highlighted which is this guy right here so at the moment there is actually a surface here and you're just not seeing it um, I can bring that up in the view menu and if I go to visibility, I can go down here into uh, 3D surfaces so you can see how it's shaded now. So there's actually a surface sitting there, but I don't want to do that because it's going to block me out here from looking at this nice and clearly. But what I can do on the create tab is I can create points uh, on a plane. Okay. So here it says surface points or surface lines. So I'm going to go, um, and do a point or a line and I'm going to go here. So this cartridge case, this was here before. This is where it is right here. So I just made a line and I'm going to right click and go end. Okay. So I'm actually going to just create a point and it's hard to see, but it's right over here. There's a point right over here. And then I'm going to cycle through to the second one. So there's shot one final and I'm going to create another point here and it's projecting it on that plane and I'm going to connect it to the first initial impact position. Boom. And I'm going to end draw and you'll see here it created a line and I'm going to label this now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, this line that's over here, I'm going to give it a little name. Uh, it just gave me a warning about the auto save. I'm going to click on this line. I'm going to right click on it. And where it says name for this line, I'm going to call this the shot one. And then I'm going to go, okay. So this way, if I export it later, um, it's easier to do. And I'm going to repeat the process. Let me do that again for you. So I'm going to cycle through. I'm going to go to, okay, shot two, the initial position. So it's right there. So again, I'm going to go to uh, marking these surface points. Now there is a, a shortcut here. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to, I have to end it. And then I'm going to cycle through for, I need to find now shot three initial, the initial impact was before 
uh, shot two final rest position happens. So they're kind of in the correct order. It just may not appear that way. So um, let me just see if I got their shot two final. Okay, so it's rolling around for a bit. So I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to go back and click on shot two on the initial and I'm going to end draw. And just like before, I'm going to uh, click on the line, go to properties and I'm going to name this one shot two. I'm going to do five of these and then I'm going to call it uh, quits. Uh, I'm not going to do all, um, a lot more, but you can see here, um, this is now getting pretty easy. It took a bit of work to get here, but now that we're here, if we had hundreds of these things to do, this is going to be a lot more efficient to do back at the office or whatever. So this is shot three final. It doesn't matter what order I do these in. Uh, I know the shortcut for this. So it's number six. So I'm just going to go, oops, I got it ready already. So click on that. I'm going to end draw and I need to find the shot one initial. I uh, shot three initial. There we go right there. So I can actually just start from this again and connect that right there. You can see they're a little bit blurry. This is where having a, a higher res camera uh, would have been helpful. We actually didn't use the 4K mode. I was trying to do a little experiment with higher frame rates, but in hindsight, I wish I had gone back and just chose 4K video at 30 frames per second. I think that would have worked just fine. Um, I'm just hitting page up and page down to cycle through these images. So I need to get my first shot for initial. There we go. So it's right there. I'm going to click on this right there. I'm going to end it and keep going. Uh, shot five initial and I'm going to go to shot four final. So I'm going to click on that there and then I'm going to connect it to the first one and I'm going to go and draw just like before. Let's label it right away so I don't lose track. And this is shot four. So let me just put that in there. Shot four, great. And you'll see that the lines are being created here on the 3D model if I zoom in, right? So now I get all the distances and everything else, which is great, it's fantastic. So let me go back to shot five, initial. We're gonna mark this one. Let me get the shortcut here. There we go, and draw. And let's just find shot five, final. And let me see here. And it's coming up right over there we go okay so that's the final rest position there and that's five right there beautiful click on this properties and i'm going to call this shot five all right so that is pretty much the main part of the work just getting you can see all the lines here if i rotate around i've got my plane um, i could export this now i could export all these these markings or these lines and we can review them too so if i hit the m key in photo modeler um, this will give me measurement information so for example if i go to uh, any one of these lines i'll click on it like this and you'll see that it says line id and then it says you know what the uh the 2D distances, it gives me uh, a number of different things. If I click on just a point, uh, let me go back here. You'll see the point ID, right? It gives me the X, Y, and Z coordinates. So I can easily export all these points like that, like this, the point. And then I can look at the, the lines here too. So um, yeah, there's a bunch of things that we can do here now, but this is a way that we would go ahead, mark all the points, or all the cartridge cases and the images, collect all the information. We can export this now. Um, there's a number of things that we can do. That may seem a little complicated, but again, when you're doing a lot, a lot of cartridge cases and you're collecting a lot of data, um, this is gonna be much more efficient when you're at the range than when you are you know, trying to take hand measurements and uh, much easier to do back at the office here. So that's it for this one. I want to say thanks to everybody for watching Click3D and we will see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.